Hi, welcome to round six of the Daytona D-Max Inter Enduro Championship. We've just seen a very hot and heavy qualifying session with one driver maybe surprising the rest of the field and getting a bit of a jump on them. Indeed, we've got our third place man here, Bobby Trundley. Third place, what do we think we can do from there? Anything happens. I mean, I'm hoping to work my way by Mike because he's on the outside, but it's an hour race. We do not know what's going to happen. Hopefully the plan is probably just to hook onto the back and if we can pull away from the rest, sort it out later. But we don't know the differences between our pace over and long endurance. So hopefully I can beat them on that round. Excellent. Uh, you've got two very competitive drivers in front of you. Your personal opinion, keep it clean. How do, what do you think of them? <laughs> well, I think of Mike. Um, <laughs> I'll put you on the spot here. Yeah, Mike's my teammate in Applewood, so I'm being kind to him. Andrew's fantastic. Uh, so. You, you, so you said that under your breath there. <laughs> well, he's quicker than you. <laughs> yeah, but both brilliant drivers. Mike is a little bit dirty on Sundays, so... <laughs> Excellent stuff. Well, best of luck for the race, Bobby. Thank you. Let's go to Bobby Trundley's deadly rival, <laughs> Mike Coppin. Whatever he says about you, you've just mugged him in qualifying. Oh, exactly. Who's, uh, who's that who, Bob, eh? <laughs> uh, I was, uh, was going to wax lyrical about how well Bobby's done, but I don't think I will now. <laughs> he normally does better than that, doesn't he? But you're on the outside, is that a problem? Uh, based on the lights, no. Sam Hampshire went round the outside of, uh, of the first place into Turn 1, so it can happen. Um, I think, exactly as we said, I don't know what the gaps are between the top three of us and everyone else. Um, Not a lot. No. So I, I think Andy's maybe got a tenth and a half on, uh, on the rest of us at the moment, so I think the challenge for the first 15 minutes is going to be keeping hold of Andy, but we'll see. It's, uh, it's a long race the carts can come to you halfway through the race so you never know a really really competitive field uh, you've got the pole sitter i have indeed andy spencer 50.890 surely you should be in the lights i don't know about that <laughs> i think i put a bit on rather than uh, than lost it but i have to balance up two and a half kilo to so i'm on i'm on i'm on the number which yeah is useful. Oh, i say cracking time uh, is it your first time here i've been here in the corporate carts but never in uh, something something serious like this so yeah. yeah i'm really pleased excellent and you're enjoying the circuit nice track for this one yeah uh, it's I, I i have when i came here before they they did have this new new layout so i can't say i don't know where the track goes but as i say it's a very different animal in a in a cart that goes as quick as this so no excellent stuff well very best of luck for the race we all wish you all the best the champion well uh, this should be an interesting one. What do we think? Yeah, it's not just the top three guys we've spoken to. This is such a competitive class. Uh, any number of people could pop up from that midfield and really challenge them. But those top three, particularly the battle between Bobby Trundley and Mike Coppin, I'm really looking forward to. It's going to be an interesting one. And here it is coming up next. The inter Enduros race for the D-Max Championship. Okay then, so the lineup for the race, starting on pole, Andy Spencer. Second is Mike Coppin, third place. Bobby Trunley, Ross Blackwood in fourth, Seb Cook in fifth place, Chris Alcock in sixth, Tim Ellis starting in seventh place, Chris, ha uh, Chris Hackworth sorry, uh, starting in eighth, uh, Curtis Mitchell in ninth, Anthony Kirk rounding out the top ten for the Inter Enduros. Uh, in eleventh we have Simon Ross, uh, next to him is Owen Jenman, in thirteenth Brian Alexander, uh, Nuno Costa in 14th place, Turan uh, Bellot Jr. in 15th, Sam Bennett in 16th place. And I'm going to try my best to call him Bennett and not Beckett uh, during this race. Uh, Joe Ellis is starting in 17th, Jordan Taylor in 18th, Philip Senior in 19th, Joshua Craft in 20th, Christopher Carlington in 21st, Stuart Shearman in 22nd, James Browning in 23rd, Lee Carey in 24th, Tony uh, Castro in 25th, John Donnelly in 26th, and Andy Stobart rounding up the grid in 27th place. Okay, here we go, as they get ready. Lights are still red, as they're budged up, revs get higher. Here we go, lights go green and are underway into turn one. It looks like we're four wide, get the middle of the pack Mike as they go Coppins through. had an absolute blinder. He's just jumped out to first place and built a gap. And it looks like Bobby Trundley's slotted into third place behind Andy Spencer. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so really good. A lot of contact. Drivers having to take to the curve. It's got to be safe to rejoin. That was very risky uh, by that driver. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, I need to go over that. But cracking start again, as you said, from Mike Coppin in first place as they scream through turn four. Uh, all having a cracking race start. Can Andy Spencer mount an assault here on the first place? No, he's looking over his shoulder. He looks like he's defending against Bobby Trundley, which is probably wise at this point. But does that give Mike Coppin a ticket to check out? Well, you would have hoped so for uh, Mike. That's what he's uh, aiming for. If 
Andy Spencer can keep Bobby Trolley behind him and say he's looking behind already and uh, he's just keeping in that pack and not getting out and there's more overtaking further behind the grid. So the order after the first lap is Coppin, Spencer, Trundley, Cook, Ellis, Ross, Blackwood, Hackworth in eighth, Genman in ninth and Anthony Kirk in tenth. So still very close all the way through. All oh, carts running wide. It looks like Chris Hackworth there got pushed out. Hands go up, and that's another drive behind him. Uh, again, I still need to figure yeah, out who that Ross drive. Blackwood in the, there go, in the red Blackwood, car rules yes. there that followed him off the track. And that's Owen Genman making a move on. That's a great and brave place to take a move. And Owen Genman, he's now up the inside. And he's managed to make that stick. Oh, oh. and that's a big bump there. Big bump by that driver, Ross Blackwood. That's Anthony Kirk, who's also profiting up the inside there. Uh, and poor. Poor old Ross Blackwood there. He's lost out hand over fist. Yeah, so lots of contact there through uh, Anthony Kirk and Ross Blackwood through that final section. I'm sure race control are going to be having a quick. And I think it's Tim Ellis who led that, that duo off track on the exit of turn three there. And he's getting a warning for curbs in cart 14. Yeah, uh, so the uh, mid-pack of drivers as well. I'm surprised there's been nothing for Chris Hackworth and uh, Ross Blackwood as well. They say they were both two drivers that went off wide. Bobby Trondley is sizing say. up Andy Spencer. Let's see if he can get a good enough exit. Down the pit straight. He looks like he's going tight to the inside line. Andy Spencer's well aware of him. He hasn't had to go too defensive. Uh, Bobby a, Trundley's just lined him up. There's a cut off in the back. I'm not sure who that was, but it was the blue suit, white lead in cut 14. Uh, I'm going to try quickly figure out who that was. Tim Ellis. Tim Ellis there. Off onto the grass. I think he got forced off. I'm not sure who by, though. That's his second trip off as well. Uh, and uh, now Owen Jenman's under pressure. It looks like Chris Hackworth. Is it me or is he backing up the pack a bit? Uh, yeah, he's certainly having to defend and Owen Jenman's benefited oh. from that because Owen Jenman's just gone down the inside of Anthony Kirk. So it was Simon Ross there putting his hand up and he went down the inside. So Sorry, big, big pardon. Yeah. So I'm in the same boat as you. I'm, uh, I've got a list in front of me with the cart names. I'm trying to get the numbers, but here we go. As they're going around, really close battle between these guys as they're going through this side by side. And this is still uh, Tim Ellis, I believe, that we've got here. No, it isn't. It's Owen Jenman, sorry. It's Owen Jenman who we've got. And there's a cut off wide round the tyres. Uh, I think that was Anthony Kirk there, and he's come back on and he's forcing his way. Yes, it was Anthony Kirk. He's having some real adventures in that midfield. He really is, he really is. So uh, coming at the front, still uh, Chris Hackworth, he's bunching up this pack. But, yeah, uh, Owen. he is creating quite a train behind him. He he's is. defending hard. He's got that position, he's entitled to defend it, going very sideways into turn 10. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's creating fantastic racing behind him. It is, and it's Chris Alcock and Owen Jenman who are just behind him, and they're battling it out. They're trying to, uh, they're trying to get past each other, squabbling for position, but they just, they just can't get past the fact that Chris had, uh, Hackworth is just is backing up this pack. So that pack at the moment is Hackworth, Ross, Jenman, Alcock, Blackwood, Taylor, Ellis, Kirk, oh. uh, and more. And there's a move for the front. So it looks like uh, Andy Spencer was looking for a move there, and Mike Coppin out of the exit of turn number three. They've stayed in position, but they are still very close. Bobby Trondley put his hand up. I don't know why. He went wide himself. There was no one around him. But uh, Mike Coppin is keeping an eye behind him. He keeps looking back. But Andy Spencer is all over the back of Mike. He's not letting him go. He's right here with him. Mike Coppin goes slightly wide, and Andy Spencer has taken advantage. He moves to the inside across the line. He's got the inside line into turn one. Is he going to make the move? He is, so that's a great move from Andy Spencer. Owen jenman has got the much place. better run uh, on Simon Ross going down the start finish straight. So he's going to resume second place in the Hackworth train. I reckon Jenman's going to have this. Hey, that's quite a good in-play live bet. I like it. I, I raise you. Uh, no, I don't think Seb Cook's in it. I think this is Andy Spencer's. I think he's going to hold on. Spencer's. I, think, I think he's got the pace. And okay. to be honest, Jenman is not going to breeze by either of the Applewood no, boys. definitely not. But I'd like a challenge, and that's a challenge for me. <laughs> that's on, a good Jen. one. I've God, seen Jenman do things. Time. Well, he's not listening to your tactics there. He's, he's not. He's just shut the door on the exit of turn two. Uh, I, I think, oh, as, he, as uh, Seb Cook hits the barrier on the exit of turn three as well, I think that he knows this is his best chance of finishing in fourth place ahead of Jenman is yeah. now. He's yeah. got to just battle from here to the end of the race. I don't think there's any sense in letting him through. He's got, he's got to fight for the sake of his own race. Uh, but it looks like Jenman, oh, he bro he, uh, he's, he's gone on the brakes early. And Seb Cook actually there went we too deep and too wide. I thought Jenman went early. I think that Seb Cook might have just braked too late and gone too deep and let him through. That's a man who's going to win a race, that. <laughs> and it's going to be this one.
So now we have to really watch that gap from Jenman up to the front three. Oh, here oh, we go. Bobby with a move. I think Mike might have uh, just stuttered a little bit at turn 10 and Bobby's got the run on him. But look how far away that's let Spencer go. Yeah, Spencer's really pulled out a commanding lead there, uh, which is annoying because I want Jenman to win. But uh, <laughs> it's fine. He'll close it back up. And uh, yeah, no, really good. And we need to see Bobby. Look at Bobby. He's really pushing that car. I need to get that place back. And he's closed right up under braking. I think two. Bobby might feel that Mike's stopping his chances of getting at Andy Spencer right now. Yeah, I think you're right. He needs to get uh, that position up. Mike Coppin goes quite wide there. He's looking behind. He's going defensive. Again, if I'm Mike Coppin, I'm thinking, this is my chance. I'm fighting for second place now. I'm not fighting for first. I've got to keep Bobby Trundley behind me. In 20th. Bobby Trundley goes up the inside of Mike Coppin into turn one. He looks to have a go. Mike Coppin is holding it on the outside. But Mike Coppin was waving furiously in front of him at the back markers because he knew that they were going to have a big factor. One of the back markers has gone all the way off on the exit of turn two. And Mike Coppin, oh, Mike Coppin's been held up. Is Bobby Trundley going to get a run down to turn four? I think he is. I think he's got his nose in front. No, he slots back in behind. Tell me that they're going to get through the back markers into turn four. Bobby Trundley had to go very, very narrow and ended up going wide on the exit of turn four. It's compromised his entry into turn seven, but he's right on the back of Mike Coppin now as they go towards turn ten. Oh, it's contact! He's giving, oh, he's really bumped him there. He's apologising and he's waving him through. Round of applause, Bobby Trundley. I saw what you tried to do there. It didn't come off. You broke too late. You hit your stable, mate. And then you realised you were in the wrong and you let him back through. But to be fair, he punted him out of the way and there was a gap and he's not taken it. He's taken sportsmanship over that position. Uh, probably best. I think they're sharing a lift home. <laughs> yeah, that would be an interesting ride home, wouldn't it? Uh, no, no, cracking stuff from uh, Bobby Trundley there. Uh, really good uh, sportsmanship, as you just said. Mike Coppin has to dive and take a very shallow line and go wide. Oh no, he's had to take a, a narrow line to overtake a back marker and that has allowed Bobby Trondley through. But that forced Mike Coppin deep onto the exit of turn seven, entry of turn eight, and Bobby Trondley just took his normal line and helped himself to second place. And I believe that's the same back marker that they came a proper one the first time that they came around and had to lose a place. So, uh, back marker not doing very well to get out of the way. I it was a nearly impossible situation to be in. He's got guys coming up on his inside. He moved over to the left-hand side. Unfortunately, that's exactly where Mike Coppin wanted to be. And yeah. he had to compromise and go very It's the best you narrow. could do yeah. in the situations that he had, yeah. So Apart from stomp well on the brakes and jump on the grass, I'm, I'm not willing to throw him under the bus <laughs> for it just yet. No. Owen Genman gets past much easier, though, and that could have ramifications on that who we talk to on the podium. Down at turn 10, you really get a sense of how much they're fighting for every bit of grip around this hairpin, leaning all the way out in their carts. And the difference between the guys who choose to keep it planted, like Andy Spencer, who's just planted, who's just passed me, and the guys like Bobby Trundley, who hang it all out on the line, look a lot more sideways on entry, a lot more aggressive, and Owen Jenman's right on the back of Mike Coppin now. Now we've got a fight. Yeah, here we go. So, Owen Jenman now very close behind. He's got the slipstream. Coppin's looking behind him. They're going into turn one. He doesn't look at it this time. Is he going to go for a lunge? It looks like Coppin went wide. Bit of contact from Jenman. Jenman goes down the inside. Coppin lets him through and it's a good overtake by Jenman. So the move was done fairly quick. Now we need to see that gap that Jenman can get. I, I think this is smart to have not... Obviously he's tried to defend his position but not to lose and throw away exactly. a podium they've, chance. They've not, fought, yeah. they've not fought, he's just let him through. He's on his tail now, they're catching Trundley, and now Trundley's got a back marker. Oh, a bit of contact, Coppin. A little kiss from behind of Jenman, just to let him know he's there. He may have just outbraked himself, but uh, Jenman again trying the outside. He tries to get the switch back. It looks like he may have done it, but Trundley cuts him off. Trundley carried so much speed through the apexes in turn two. Really close racing by these two. They're both run slightly wide. <laughs> they both got off track, let's be honest. They both cut the track. <laughs> uh, here they go into the tight section. And they all get through. I think everybody's okay. holding their breath here they to, are, to see what Jenman will do. I don't think Jenman's looking for a lunch down the inside of turn 10. I think he's looking to do something on the exit of turn 10, turn 11, home I straight. Think, I think he's lining him up for a move down the inside of the final corner, out of 11. I, I think he is, because every time Trundley goes, uh, he's got quite a wide line, and he switches back over to the outside, and I think he's just going to send it. He's you keep an eye on that. Dive it down on the inside. I, I guarantee that's where Jenman's going to do the overtake. 
I'd put a, a great stuff for Genman moving up into second place. Mike Coffey certainly chasing him down the number 57 car, being lapped, going very wide, indicating he's pointing to the inside. And that's not that helpful to Bobby Trondley because he's losing time. Whereas Mike Coffin was able to take his normal racing line. <laughs> Having said that, the back marker now moves to the outside going into turn two and has held Mike Coppin up for three corners now. Make that four. As no, he don't, no, <laughs> it is four. He's making life very, very hard. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and Mike Coppin gesticulates. I think, in fairness, the back marker, what, it was one of those after you, after me, sidestepping, and they kept getting in each other's way. Uh, I think he was unaware that Mike Coppin was there. Uh, he saw the blue flags for Bobby Trunley. Uh, I don't think he realised that Mike Coppin was also there as well. So, uh, yeah, we're starting our last lap now. So, Andy Spencer crossing the line. He'll see the last lap board. There it is. As he now goes around turn one, he's got a couple of back markers just in front of him. He's got no real incentive to pound past these back markers. So no. I think if the opportunity's there, he'll take it. But I think he'd obviously be just as well off to follow them in. Uh, I'm sure he's got communication back to the pits. He knows he's at least 15 seconds in the lead of this race. He's getting the blue flags. He's going past anyway, so he's, he's keeping his head down. He's going for it. Even a polite thank you on the way past. So Andy Spencer with just five laps to complete as he goes down the pit straight. He's already fist pumping in the air. He's absolutely delighted. He was delighted with pole. He's on the penultimate turn. He knows how much he wanted to complete this race victory. Andy Spencer has won the Enduro race in the heat. Andy Spencer, pole to flag, celebrating, pumping his fists in the air. Well done, that man. He's fought for it. He fought for it at the beginning, and he's held it. Yeah, very well done. Uh, unfortunately for one of the drivers, he's getting stuck on the last lap there at the back. But, uh... Owen Genman crosses the line in second place. He was stuck in seventh or eighth place. He was in a big chain of carts and he's managed to fight through. He made short-ish work of the Applewood boys. He managed to fight past Bobby Trundley. He managed to fight past Mike Coppin. He fought past Seb Cook and got himself up into second place. He's gonna be absolutely exhausted. He's got to be delighted with that second place. And then Bobby Trundley and Mike Coppin. You gotta feel for Mike Coppin. He was holding off in second place. He was holding Bobby Trundley off until a back marker interfered with his line into turn seven. He ended up diving deep and late and going wide. And Bobby Trundley, who was harassing him from behind, ended up picking up quite an easy overtake in the end. So we're here with third place man, Bobby Trundley. I mean, that race was defined by a great battle with your stable mate, Mike Coppin. Uh, it got quite physical at times. Like, how hard is it to separate your friendship when you're there on track fighting so hard? There's no friend. Come here. Come here. Come here. You got a comment on this as well. You can comment on this. Uh, this is Mike Coppin, and at full face, he wants to comment about our battle, do you? No, I mean, at one point, I mean, I don't want to stir the pot, but he clearly punted you and then went past. Yeah, but it was, you know, it wasn't, it was, wasn't, well, it wasn't deliberate. <laughs> no, it was, it was good racing, it was fair. Yeah, he was, uh, he was the better driver on the day, so we were nip and tuck all the way through. I think a few more laps, maybe, we might have been back closer together, but he was quicker. You actually unlucky on the overtake, weren't you? You had to dive deep to avoid a back marker. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, he, as we were coming through the back markers with about 10 minutes to go, he got a slightly better run through a couple, gave him three or four cart lengths, and it was just enough to demoralise me enough that I wasn't going to catch him. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. You'd have had him anyway, though, wouldn't you? Probably. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Uh, let's, thank you very much, Bobby Trundley. Let's see if we can get a, a, a word with second place, man. Hello. Gentlemen, that sounded fun. That looked fun. You were in seventh or eighth place at one point, stuck in a big chain behind Hackworth. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, didn't qualify well at all. Um, rolled the dice and uh, he paid off in the end, but I didn't think initially I was going to be able to come through like that and then managed to, I think it was Hackworth, yeah, got past him, had a bit of clear air and uh, the cart just suddenly started coming to me. Um, so yeah, good, good fun. And, and then you find yourself up against the Applewood boys and you must be thinking, well, that's not an easy pair to get through. Um, no, not at all, but to be honest, uh, Mike made it a little bit easy for me. And then, I think he was hoping I was going to tow him up to the back of Bobby or take Bobby out or something, but um, it didn't happen, so he, he, it didn't really quite work out for him. But We did wonder if that would be the case. Is there any point fighting Owen Genman? Is there ever really? Second place, you can be happy with that today from where you started. Absolutely, yeah, no, it's um, yeah, good, good result from, from where I started, happy with that, definitely. Thank you very much, Robert Gem uh, Owen Genman, beg your pardon, uh, from... From pole position, Andy Spencer, our race winner, everyone. Round of applause.
It's a great effort. You put yourself on pole. You seem to be the most prepared man, the fastest man on track, but you had to fight for it at the beginning. I had a terrible start. I don't know. I need to practice that. That was awful. Give Mike a bit of a, a get away. And then I thought, well, no, no point battling. We'll try and stretch the field out a bit and then we'll have a little fight later. He made a couple of mistakes. Um, and then I was like, right, I've got a chance here. Let's go through. Went through, got a bit of a gap. And then I was just, just trying not to break the cart, to be honest. I was trying to... Yeah, it was, it's one of the longest hours you ever have when, you, when you're there in front and you're trying to keep it. You got in front really early. When you've got a 13 second lead and you're way out in front like that, are, are you pushing or are you just trying to stay off the curbs? What are you doing? Definitely try and stay off the curbs. Um, it's quite nice to track. You can see the other people behind you because you're going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. And you, you look across and you see them. And I saw Gemman come in again and he did it at Butmore Park and, and he got that one. And I thought, oh, here we go again. But he didn't really, um, he wasn't catching as quick this time. So I was quite comfortable, keep off the curbs and just, just look after the cart, really. Feels like I'm speaking to you more and more on these podiums. So the rest of the season good? Hopefully. Well, that's three in a row now, so. And uh, up to third in the championship. So I just got to try and keep pushing these top boys and see what happens. But it's going, it's going the right way. I'm happy. Andy Spencer from pole to the win. Thank you very much for that. I'll bring DJ in for that. What a performance from that man today. Amazing performance. Absolutely amazing. Uh, committed throughout I say struggled with the start but from there absolutely cracking race nailed it it's been fantastic if you want to join in for round seven or for next season go to daytonamax.co.uk and get involved